go. When I hit the button, bang. Bang, we're live. Wonderful. All right, All right. cool. Just make sure we're streaming and uh, we should be good to go. Got it. I see us. You see I'm us? We are, I'm going to share this out, Brian. Why don't, right, uh, do why don't you introduce Chris and let's get this kicked off, man. All right. So tonight we have the one and only Chris Whitehead, who is the director of Apex Coaching. Um, huge. He's the founder of Iconic Alliance, uh, which is his own coaching program, which is uh, basically focusing right now on Build Your Machine with Apex Accelerator, which is an awesome, awesome program. Uh, top selling author. Uh, he's got a great book out there. Um, check it out. Um, and um, thank him for coming on tonight. I know he's a busy schedule. He's been going since 5 a.m. this morning. I'm sure uh, he's tired, but he was able to, <laughs> able to stay up with us and uh, put an extra hour in and uh, spread some wisdom and some love to. Uh, to oh, the man. Here. You know, <laughs> thanks for the intro, everybody. <laughs> Somebody just like everybody else. But at the end of the day, man, I respect you guys so much and I love you as friends. And I knew that we were having a hard time connecting. So when you reached out to me today, and said, can you do 8.30 tonight? I was like this, no. <laughs> yes, I have to do it. I have to do it for these guys. So I'm actually really grateful to be here because even though, you know, I was starting to fade about 30 minutes ago, I was like, as soon as I get on with these guys, we're all just going to start chopping it up and having fun. I'm so, having fun already. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's all about, man. All right. You're going to excuse me just a second. All right. He's going to do some sharing and changing. Oh, he's changing, sharing. Oh, he's getting naked for us on TV. Nice. Night. See it if, got hot in the any, Anything for the ratings, yeah. It's all for the gram. It's all for the gram. <laughs> they'll, stop, they'll stop watching if I take any more off. Shit. It just it got hot. It got hot. So um, right. What are we what are we doing here, Chris? Man, I'm I love I love that you've taken time out to come hang with us. Um and dude, you, you got so much stuff going on. Um, I don't know where to to take this interview. I desperately want to ask you about the time you sold Kirby's. <laughs> oh, oh, do not make me really, dude. It was hard enough just to get that post out. Um, yeah, I saw that today, and I'm like, God, I feel his pain. Is there not a one of us that hasn't tried selling vacuums for just a minute? <laughs> dude, that was serious. I called my dad in tears. You know, it was it was like, look, okay, and let me frame it for everybody because you didn't read this post, okay. <laughs> So I made it all the way through college until 13 credits shy of graduating. And I just, I threw a small nuclear bomb on it and it blew up and I was like, fine. So I, I meet the woman that I'm going to marry. I know I'm going to marry her. And we move away from the college town because it was all a bunch of partying and I was working in restaurants and I was like, you know, this isn't going to work. I'm going to be a grown up now. So I move about 45 miles away. And I start working for this company called Electrolux. And, you, you know, like all of us, man, I'm, I'm 21, 20, 21 years old. I, I was the same age, man. You just, and, and, and I yeah. was like, you know what? I'm going to be a stand up citizen. I'm going to really do the work. And that's what we should talk about tonight, the force of average. But anyway, I'm going <laughs> to really become who I need to become. And I walked right into the mouth of the lion. <laughs> and, and so I'm sitting there and I'm getting trained and they're showing me this stuff and I'm, I'm naive. So I believe every bit of it about this vacuum and I go. And so I had the first job. So that $9 there, there's a loss leader that they say, Hey, we'll clean your carpets for $9. And that's my opportunity to come into their house and, uh, and sell them the Kirby or the, the Electrolux vacuum. Well, these were a bunch of college students that had picked up every chair on the first floor. And I'm standing in like, you know, khakis and a tie. And, <laughs> and, and it's the first time I've been out on my own and I vacuumed for over an hour. And then I sheepishly looked at them and I said, would you like to buy this shampoo and this vacuum? And they all started laughing at me and they were like, nah, man, that was the best $9 I've mm -hmm. ever spent. <laughs> yep. and, and I just kind of walked out with my head down going, all right, that sucked. Well, the next sale opportunity I had, um, I knocked on a guy's door and he was real nice. He invited me in. And part of the deal is you vacuum it with their vacuum. And then you take your vacuum and you put a cloth between the suction and the, and the actual collection bag. And you go over it and then you pull the cloth out and you go, see how dirty this is? Your yeah. vacuum sucks. And, and so I did it and I showed him and he goes, huh, that's pretty interesting. He goes, um, let's try that in reverse. 
And I said, <laughs> absolutely. Because, you know, I, I, I believe in what I'm selling. This is a multi-million dollar vacuum that we're only selling for $1,000 in 1996, right? So we do it in reverse. And as much dirt comes out <laughs> after he vacuums and bro, I started tearing up. Mm-hmm. I got really embarrassed. Um, I start all of the, like, have I been sold down the road? Anyway, long story short, he re- tries to reverse sell me into a multi-level marketing company. I don't have anything against multi-level marketing. It's just, bro, I came in there to sell him something. And by the end yeah. of it, he's, he's selling me something and I've been caught out of integrity. So I was at a weak moment and it took me a, a couple of weeks of just ignoring him to get rid of him. But I remember calling my dad after that and just, dude, I'm a college dropout. I've got this woman that I really want to be a provider for. And I'm just a dumbass, man, a total, mm-hmm. like, what the hell am I doing? And I started crying and he's like, son. And the reason I was crying is because, well, twofold. Number one, I, I thought I would never make it in life. <laughs> That's how I really felt. And number two, I was scared to death. He was going to tell me, you puss, go get back in there and go do the job. And, um, and he just said, nah, son, just hand them their stuff back and give them your two week notice. And I went back the next day, kind of nervous. And I handed them the stuff and I said, I'm, I'm ready to give you my two week notice. And they said, get the hell out of here, man. It was a commission only job. So they didn't care. And, um, and I moved on and here we are, you know, 24 years later, I own four companies and money's coming in, best-selling author speaking on stages and all this stuff. And I look back at it. And, and that's kind of what's hard for all of us. You know, a lot of us people that are listening right now, you're just so busy in that trench doing that work mm-hmm. and you're having failures, you're having successes. And the truth is, is you probably don't take time to count either of them very much. That's true. And, yeah. And, you know, I started an exercise a couple of years ago through one of our mentors, Ryan Stum, and I started listing out all the things that I had accomplished, even just in the last 10 years. And it's like, man, I've been in the wall street journal. I've been a Forbes contributing uh, author. I've, I've spoken on stages. I've done all this stuff. And then what started happening was, well, what are all the things that really impacted me? Well, I'm not saying that selling Electrolux is bad. I'm not, I'm (laughs) saying that my experience with it is that it was the worst Tinman sales kind of conversation. I mean, laying a vacuum over on its side to show that it's dead, uh, sucking dust out of something. It's, it's, it was all out of integrity. And for the first time in my life, I was trying to learn integrity and I was in a big, bold world that was just going to chew me up. And here's, here's what I learned today. And the reason that I shared the post, dude, I just didn't quit. Right. You no, know, I didn't commit suicide. And I'm not making light of that. I didn't, um, you know, I didn't let drinking take me over. And I tried that. I didn't let my failed college, my failed relationships with girls, my parents, my siblings, my friends, my, you know, almost making it to the pros in baseball, but not getting there. I didn't let all of those things in my head stop me. I just kept taking one step forward going, maybe one day, maybe one day. And what I've learned, and this is the good news for everybody. If you're unwilling to quit on your dream and you keep knocking on that door hard enough and you keep being willing to change without ego, eventually your ego will get burned out and you're going to get your opportunity. And if you're prepared for it, you're going to capitalize on it. Amen. It'll seem as if it's by magic, but it's not. It's all that time of preparation that made you the right man or woman for the job. And so that's why I posted that today. And that's why I spend most of my time doing everything that I'm doing is encouraging other people, because I remember what it felt like to say, I don't have anything valuable to offer to the world. I'm just taking up space. Mm -hmm. And now I have a bunch of people that tell me I'm, you know, awesome and, and that I help them so much. And that feels so good. And I imagine what would it be like if hundreds and then thousands and then millions of us felt that way? What would we do for society? What would we do? Would we turn the other cheek? Would we be willing to go the extra mile with somebody? Would we be willing to overcome something that we didn't think we were strong enough to overcome? And I just imagine that being a better world for our children, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. 
I mean, the other day I had a, I had a flash of inspiration. I was sitting out back with my buddy and uh, we were smoking a cigar and I said, you know, the only difference between a 30 year old broke kid and a 40 year old millionaire is the, the, the 30 year old broke quit kid just didn't quit. And he said, that's a Facebook post. You better post that. And I posted it the next morning and 200 and something likes. Yeah. And, and that's what it's about, man. It's, it's about having that resilience not to give up because God believe knows I would have given up. Right? It's, it's, if you don't believe in yourself, I mean, who's going to believe in you, right? And when it comes I'd to make it- the, believing in your product, if you're selling a vacuum, right, you got to believe in a product. And if you're selling yourself, you got to believe in yourself. You can't sell what you don't believe in. So how do you sell yourself if you don't believe in yourself? I mean, it's really it's what it comes down to, right? We all doubt ourselves. We all... I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can get on stage. I don't know if I can write this book. I don't know if I can do a podcast. And then we just do it and it happens. And next thing you know, it's like, oh, it's no big deal. Right? <laughs> well, you know, even before <clears throat> I really believed in myself, there was a dude named Brian Tracy that I saw on stage, you know, and, and he impacted me. And I'm forever changed. Because I, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm this kid from Virginia. I've never been anywhere and not now, but at the time I was young and I'd never been anywhere or really experienced much of anything. And here's this guy larger than life. And there were probably only a couple hundred people in the audience. Brian Tracy, if you don't know him, you're not in sales, but, um, but at the end of the, I mean, that guy's spoken to millions and millions of people, but it just so happened that he was in front of 200 people and, he transferred his belief into me that day, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I just said, man, there's something about, I want to be like that one day. And here I am 24 years later, and I'm being given the opportunity to stand on stage and I get to say whatever I choose to say. Nobody dictates it to me. And I'm saying the same thing. Brian Tracy is the people I'm telling them. I believe in them because it, it changed my life and I wouldn't know you guys. I wouldn't know your stories. I wouldn't know what we've done to overcome and and the tragedies we've come through. That's gotta be worth something in today's world where everybody is focusing on negativity. Instead, I, I, I prefer to focus on what we're doing to succeed. You know, it does just so like when you come across people and you try to explain that to them, they just don't get it. I'm like, look, why don't you focus on the good things that you can control and just leave the negative stuff and you just focus on the good and you get more good. And that, that negative just falls away. And yet they stay in the negative shit. I'm like, look, you, you're going to get the energy back that you put out, <laughs> leave it alone. But like trying to get, you can lead them to the water, but trying to get people to drink from that, that positivity and from that gratitude cup. I find that the biggest stumbling block when I'm helping to coach people. Like, yeah. So, you know, I've been coaching people for eight or 10 years. I've been coaching people a lot longer than that because I've owned a business for a long time. And there are two things that come to mind. Number one, I have never personally, I'm sure there's a few examples of it, but I've never met a business owner that built something from the ground up that could stay focused in the negative and find success. You can't, you can't do it. It'll eat you alive. Oh, absolutely. And, and number two, I don't really understand I don't really understand what the benefit is personally. Like if, have you ever eaten Brussels sprouts? Many times. I love them. (laughs) Yeah. See, I don't. And it doesn't make it right or wrong. But for me, I don't like it. So for me, when I'm hanging out around negative and I've been around people that, that are kind of addicted to negativity you see them getting all frothy at the mouth and, and they start breathing heavy and they're looking left and right and they're getting energized by it. I do the opposite. I get angry and frustrated mm-hmm. because I, I'm kind of like a, I'm a dude, man. I want to go into a cave and be left alone. That means no stress. That means no drama. No anybody that I want to think of. I just want to sit back and not think about anything. Mm-hmm. So when somebody comes to me with negativity. I've got two things going on. Number one, what do we do to solve it? Number two, you didn't take what advice I just said to solve it. And I don't want to be around you anymore. And so Dude, that I, happens. Yeah. That what happens. I've done is I found that by posting on social media, only the things that I believe in, I attract people to me that believe in what I believe in. And the conversations are completely different. You'll give away all the secrets. It's okay. They can. <laughs> they can. <laughs> Well, so only if they do the work, though. They do the. They got to do the work, man. That's true. 
a buddy of mine is guy David Gusson around here. He's a big uh, marketing guy in Long Island here, and he's got a saying that when a world where hate makes headlines, goodness needs to speak up. So the, you know, all the newspapers, all they want to talk about news, all this is hate, hate. You know, everyone hates each other. Everything's bad, this and that. And all of us good people take a back seat and we kind of sit there and we don't speak up. And that's something I found in Apex. I was like, wow. This is this is goodness speaking up here. This is everyone talking about winning. There's no negative in my my feed anymore. It's all gone. And uh, and the other thing that I found is how important it is to speak into people when they're doing a good job. When oh when yeah, I'm, when I'm out there and I'm doing my morning message, and some mornings I'm like that sucked. And then someone goes, Wow, that, <laughs> I'm glad you said that this morning. That was that's just what I needed to hear. And I'm like, Wow, all right, yeah, well, yeah, okay, great. You know, and if you say something, you know, that was great. And Sam says something that was great. And it makes me want to do better. It makes me keep building further. So in that same aspect, I'm like, you know what? I got to tell the people on my team, my agents that are doing good, the people in my life, that was a great job. You guys did good today because I'm thinking it, but I'm not saying it. And when I verbalize it to them to say what I'm thinking, hey, listen, you guys did awesome today. I appreciate that. We did an open house yesterday. We got 25000 over asking price at the first open house. I appreciate you guys. You did a great job. I'm thinking it, but I know we don't say it. Now I say it. And mm -hmm. in that case, now they go next week and they want to go out and do a better job because, you know, everyone likes being told they did a good job, you know. Same as any employee as a boss, right? If you got guys and uh, the boss doesn't care, the boss doesn't care, it's not so much about money a lot of times. It's about, hey, you guys did a great job today. You know, I appreciate what you're doing here. You know, I know you really worked really hard. I know that project was hard. And glad you, you know, I'm glad you got knocked it out. We got it done by the end of the day. When you say stuff like that, it builds them up to the next day. They want to show up for work tomorrow and they want to do work harder so that they can get that next, you know, verbal approval mm -hmm. everyone's looking for verbal approval right so if we don't say what's in our head and build people up around us we're we're, we're not getting the full benefit of of i don't know i guess everyone around us and an energy around us that we should need to build up into everyone charge everyone's batteries around us as we say right one of the i agree with you 100 percent. you know one of the greatest benefits to hanging around people that are more successful than you is that um your ego gets challenged, at least mine gets challenged yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it isn't, it isn't from anything that they are overtly saying, cause it's easy to agree with what they're saying overtly. It's when I start getting negative, when I start feeling like I want to gossip about somebody that's doing something that isn't appropriate inside of our networking group, when I feel like my wife or my children are bogging me down and I can't, and I don't grunt, I don't say it verbally to them, but I walk around with this big furrowed brow and, you know, I'm frustrated. I'm constantly being leveled up because of the people that I'm around to, to even if I'm, if I'm not doing it right, I'm becoming aware that that's mm -hmm. not the yeah. best way to be. Oh yeah. So there's subtleties to this thing that go far beyond if then go to modalities of say something nice, get a result. And Brian, I'm not taking away from what you're saying. I'm just saying on an even deeper level for me, when I am willing to put my ego on the line, it's scary. Number one, it sucks going through it every time you realize it. Number two, mm -hmm. but more importantly is it leads to those breakthrough conversations that you might not have had otherwise because you're willing to be vulnerable and say what you feel and screw it up and challenge yourself to come back and have the conversation again with the people that matter the absolute most to you. Because, you know, Sam, Brian, I love you guys. I don't love you as much as I love my children. <laughs> I don't love enough. you as much as I love my wife. You're not adopting us? Sorry, to fellas, to you got it. You got to do it on your own. I'll walk beside you. But, but at the end of the day, when I can bring that kind of training back and I can realize, man, I just came home and I blew my wife a new asshole or, you know, I, I grumbled to my children or I didn't set the right example. It gives me the courage to dig a little deeper and to find a better way and to get back up and to do it better. Because the one thing we all know now is that whatever we're planting in the ground today, 30, 60, 90 days from now, that's going to start sprouting something. Yeah. 
And I can choose tonight to change that. I can choose tomorrow to change that. I don't have to hold on to that anger or that excuse or that resentment because I don't have 15 buddies around me drinking at the bar telling me, yeah, she's such an asshole or yeah, kids suck and they're no better. And da, 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 da. no, 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 no. That's not what we do. We lift each other up mm, and I'm amen. not perfect at it, yes. but I'm around people that will hold me accountable to being that. And that's where the real benefit to aligning yourself with people that are at your level or better really comes into play in my mind man it, it's so crazy that the shift in my friend group and, and the no, the amount of time i spend with different people i still see most of my old friends from back in the day i make a point to swing by the bar once or twice a month but the conversations just aren't engaging i'm like how did i spend so much of my life doing the same shit like you, you've got the you got the painter that talks about the sheetrock problems you've got the retired professor that that's talking about shit he's watched on cnn like you guys are still here like and so by by changing the people i've been around and changing my friend groups i still have my old friends i still see them but the conversations i get to participate in now and the, the problems i get to solve i think that um that that, that biggie had it backwards the the more problems i come across the more money i see you know <laughs> I think a lot of it comes down to awareness, right? So when you're surrounded by all these things, you're in my uh, head a lot, Chris, as far as the relationship with the family and the kids and all that other stuff and how you come home from work, you know, cranky and you take it out on everybody. And it's, we all know we do it, but then I stop now and I go, wait, take a deep breath and let's, let's, let's speak nice now. Like leave it at the door, you know, and, and let's come inside and let's build up the family. Let's tell the kids, Hey, listen, I'm happy to see you. Hey, listen, how was your day? You know, I come in on the phone talking about business, this and, hey, uh, you know, it's da, 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 da. now, all right, let me try and finish the call outside. Let me come inside. Let me be present for the kids. Let me be here. Hey, daddy's home. I'm happy to see you. Let's sit down and have dinner together rather than walking in on the phone and, and having a conversation and who knows what I'm saying on the phone, swearing and whatnot. The kids are here in the background. And it's just that awareness that says, hey, stop. Stop, asshole. Stop. Dude, it's... You know? It's because of the simplest law in the universe. And I didn't understand this until I got into the gratitude and to, into Apex and into the, into the coaching side of things. The simplest rule of the universe is that you get out of it what you put into it. Yep. If you want every interaction that you have with the people that you see to be positive, you have to engage them in a positive way and they'll engage you right back positively. If you walk into a room and you're angry and you're yelling at people, guess what? You're going to get yelled at right back. Like, yeah, so do you light the room up when you come in and you darken the room. When you walk in the room, is everyone smiling, happy to see you, or is everyone kind of, oh, <laughs> this guy's here? You know, what you got to think about that. Or if you don't walk in a room and people don't smile, you're doing something wrong. We got to figure that out. You know, everyone should be happy to see you when you walk in. You know, when you walk in with the goofy cowboy hat on, you know, people want to. One, smile, of, one of my favorite quotes <laughs> is everybody's always happy to see you either come or go. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. One side or the other. Yeah, yeah. You so, know, for me, you know, it's enabled me, you know, tonight I, I went home really quickly to try to have dinner and come back and um, Robin and one of the kids were gone, but I was able to have a teary eyed conversation with my 19 year old daughter for 15 minutes, you know, a really good, deep conversation for just a few minutes. And <clears throat> not that I couldn't have gotten there before, but when the weight of the world was pressing on me, when there was no opportunity that was greater, it reminds me when, you know, Sam, you were talking about these people at the bar, you know, when I was 20 years old, I thought I was severely depressed and I found out I was just bored. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to college and none of that engaged anything in me. It was, it was just, if then go to modality and yep. I saw all my friends and they were happy drinking in the fraternity and, you know, hooking up with girls and, and getting in fights. And I tried some of that for a little bit and I'm like, well, that was fun. The first 12 times it's no more fun anymore, you know, <laughs> but it, once I, and this was true, once I met Brian Tracy and I started down this path and then I became a business owner at 24 years old ever since then it's been solving problems. And like you said, now I see more problems that I'm, that I've ever seen, but I'm able to capitalize on them. Yeah. Because yeah. I have solutions. Sometimes that solution is giving it space. Yeah. Sometimes that solution is giving advice. Sometimes it's putting my head down and doing the work, 
but I can see them and I know what to do with them now. And I'm no longer bored. I have no depression whatsoever. Right. whatsoever. I wake up every morning kind of like, yeah, let's go. Um, and I usually go to bed feeling that way too. And I just am okay living like that until I die. Yeah. It's There's simple. The, I keep the problems. Well, the problems don't change. Like yeah. right. You just get better at solving them. And as soon as you can solve uh, you know, low level problems, you get better at solving mid level problems. Then everybody's the same problems. We yeah. we're just better at solving them through experience. You know, that, that's it, it's, it's the weird, it's the weirdest thing on earth. I don't know where it got slipped in that somehow, some way you're going to win quote unquote, the lottery, eat bonbons and have a perfect life forever. Yet so many of us, search for that hmm. so you, you search for this one little dot easy button <laughs> and the world is all around you with eight gazillion opportunities but you're only willing to do this and the truth is is exactly what you said and this is my experience the more success that i have the more complex my problems are mm -hmm. i'm just getting better at dealing with them mm -hmm. and and the ability to not personalize them yeah. So that I can then move through them and my life is becoming more fluid because it's almost as if it's happening for me, yeah. not to me. Dude, and when you take those problems and you systematize them and you standardize them and you build a process around them, they're not problems anymore. They're handled. And that that's what it's been for me has been just layers of problem solving and layers of building operating procedures. Yeah. We're, we're like they, wired the same where we, we, kind of get high off winning off of solving problems right you get you have a problem you yeah. fix it you won you have a problem you fix it you won and that's that's our high that, i mean just that's what i go for man. last week yeah. I, put, I put a new vanity in the bathroom because the other one the kids had cracked the uh pedestal sink so we put a vanity in at a faucet that was leaking i put the faucet in did a bunch of stuff around the house and i felt good i'm like i it was problems i fixed them now this is just in a physical world not in a, in a business type world but i thought to myself wow i feel really good i knocked out a bunch of things on the to-do list that have been on my mind. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. And I'm like sitting here listening to this conversation going, you know what? That's why we like coaching because we find people's problems and we fix them. Or we help them fix them and we watch them win. And then we find another problem we have. And that's, that's become our mission. Our purpose is let's find problems to fix. And when we can't find problems to fix, we get depressed because you're like, oh. that, that's, that's pretty much true. Right? Like I, I love it. I love fixing problems. When there's nothing going on and I'm like, you know, sitting around the house and not solving problems, it's depressing. When I get up and mm -hmm. start fixing things and solving problems, all of a sudden I'm like, all right, I feel good. Let's do this. The biggest switch for me, and it really came into fruition here in Apex, you know, I'm the director of the executive coaches there now, and it started dawning on me that th the whole thing about being a coach is that you never get to go play the ball game again. Mm-hmm. So there has to be a mental shift to where you become as fulfilled and excited by watching someone else win. And when that really clicked in for me, I realized this is not about me at all anymore. Mm -mm. That, that allowed me to become bold and tell people the truth, even if they didn't like what was getting ready to be said. <laughs> It allowed me to make room and really start listening to what people are truly saying so that I can offer them a very simple solution. Because most of the times it's not a it, it's a complex problem with very simple solutions. Yep. Most and, complex problems are. It's just yeah. figuring out the steps to do the solution. In. And just then more. creating the stage for them so that they walk into the win. They're surprised by it, but you see it coming. Mm hmm. And then you see them accomplish it and you're fulfilled by it, which gives you the fuel to go want to help more Dude, people do the same thing. There is no feeling in the world mm -hmm. like seeing the lights come on in somebody else's eyes, like yep. seeing that look on their face when they know that, holy shit, we did it. There is no feeling in the world like being responsible for that. I, I love it. It's like a drug. It it's something, it, I, today, something I client, chase. I told a client a piece of advice and... He was kind of resisting it, and I told him to go do it. And this morning, he goes, yo, I did this, and it worked. And I said, what did I tell you? He goes, I don't know why I was resisting. You were right. And I'm like, I told you. Like, just listen to me. Like, I, I know what I'm talking about here. And uh, it was uh, it was kind of fun to really just see him excited that 
what I told him to do worked. And finally, he, it was like it's his idea. And I'm like, remember last week when I told you to do that? Yeah, it worked, right? Yeah, okay, good. And it, it's, it's <laughs> neat, you know. It's neat to see them win it. And he's all excited. Oh, this is this is cool. This really worked. And it's like, all right. There's, there's nothing, you know, Sam, you and I kind of had a private conversation about this a week or so ago. But, you know, I'm a free man now. Um, money's not an issue can do what I want with who I want within reason. I'm not, you know, Bill Gates yet. Um, <laughs> but I'm free. Being free by yourself is kind of boring. Mm -hmm. So when we give people not just the fish, but we truly teach them the lesson of how to fish and they become free from that, that's the light bulb that I see go off because now they're starting to live in their purpose and they're going, well, what if I did this? And what if I did this? And what mm -hmm. if I did this? And you're like, you I go. wonder what they're going to do in 10 years. Are I wonder what, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're freeing people up so that they can walk beside you as free men and women on earth. And to me, that's the greatest mission we could be on here is, you know, I don't know. Like, I'm going to go back to it. I mean, I do know how it happened, but it's, it's just colloquialism. I don't know how it happened that we all got enslaved, but from the moment we came out of the womb, we were being told who to be and how oh, yeah. to be it. Yeah. And people don't even know who they really are and what we're able to do by just being who we are is give them permission to be comfortable enough to share in their own funkiness and weirdness and to tell them that's okay. As long as you like, yeah. you hurt somebody, sure. stop yeah. that. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we set them free. And then, I'll be damned if they don't start doing the same thing that we do. They start going and setting people free too. That's Dude, why it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Well, it's contagious. It's contagious. Winning is contagious. And I, I do everything I can to spread it. And you know what, Chris, I've been wondering how to work this in, but this brings the perfect segue up in the show for okay. me to ask you about that banner behind you. What is iconic and what is iconic Alliance that I can so, see behind you, mate? I have a movement called becoming iconic. Mm -hmm. And my idea behind it is in 2012, I created a program called Activating My Purpose. And there's a guy that works in the office right across from me now. His name's Steve Gamlin. He's commenting on the chat thread. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But no, 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 I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, um, about 12 years ago, 10 years ago, something, um, Steve was one of the first people that ever came through Activating My Purpose. And now he works with me. Mm -hmm. And I've helped thousands and thousands of people find out who they were made to be, who, what, what their real purpose is on earth. I'm talking about their major definite purpose, not the purpose to make a million dollars or the purpose to be a good husband. Like what is your, what is the reason you exist? The idea of becoming iconic is knowing what that purpose is and then taking the tools, especially inside of social media, since we're all here now, and learning how to attract your ideal client to build the business, to build the friendships of the people that you're going to run with for the rest of your life. And we have, we have a movement going um, and a program that people can join where we teach that very thing. And we, we've sistered with Apex. So as you come through my program, I then introduce you into a larger network of winners, you guys. And we start helping them to network because everybody's in integrity and they, that means they'll just do what they say they're going to do <laughs> in right. business. And we continue to grow together. And um, I wrote a book called Becoming Iconic, How to Make Today's Ceiling Tomorrow's Floor. And it, it became a number one bestseller. I'm blessed. And people are actually reading it and, and, and sharing it and commenting on it. And the goal is to help people where I was when I didn't know what my purpose was, because that was the scariest, loneliest place I'd ever been in my life. And like a lot of people, when I didn't know my purpose, I went to habits that were not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with people doing habits that are unhealthy for them. Um, as far as you're a bad person, there is no good or bad that way. It's just, you're not helping yourself and you're in pain. So what I found is when we can actually help people find that they light on fire. Mm -hmm. And I know that people will come from a thousand miles away to watch a man or a woman burn. And so that's what we <laughs> help. That's why that flame is there. We help, yeah. we help people catch fire. Yeah, and um, I love it. And, and it's, it, it friggin' works, man. 
it friggin' works. <laughs> and, I, and I love it. And I love the people that I'm working with. Um, you guys are all a part of it and it's a growing movement. And um, I don't see me stopping anytime soon, man. Why would you like set everybody on fire? It costs, it takes nothing from a flame to start under the flame. No, nope. yeah, it's on fire, man. That's, that's, I say it it's, all the time. When you're happy, someone else is happy. You know, successful. The people around you are successful. It spreads like fire. It really does. So come on, th think about it, guys. Have you ever, have you ever been kind of not feeling so great? You come down to a meetup where we all get together and within 30 minutes, you feel oh, like, dude, like, it's like, like, it, it, it's just like, like Dude, it's like like being in, in that room. If if I don't go to a meetup for like six weeks, I'm Jones in it. I need I need some of my guys. I I, I need that. Yeah. But the minute you walk in the room within within thirty minutes of shaking everybody's hand, and now like when I first walked in that room, just the imposter syndrome. I hung out at the edge, and I've told this story so many times. But I'll be forever grateful to him. It was it was Adam Nice that come up to me and it's like, oh, so you're new here. Let me show you around. And he did. And he broke the ice with so many people. Um, now, when I walk in that room, everybody knows me and I know everybody and it's hugs. And it's like, it's like I'm home. Yeah, and you leave nice. that, you leave that room f getting ready for the next six or eight week stretch before you see your buddies again. And you're ready to go. I'm, I'm like doing shit in the hotel room. I'm doing shit in the truck on the way back to, to the house. You know, I'm, I'm ready, but you know, that, that power in that room, that energy in that room, it's something that like, I can't imagine living without now. I don't, I don't know how long it took me to, uh, to discover it, but I couldn't imagine not being with it. It's fire. Well, it's one of the things that I'll forever be grateful for Ryan creating, you know, um, I, I was there when there were 12 people in executives, man. Cool. And it was still cool. I'd still never <laughs> met people that kind of worth and taking care of their bodies that way or their you know their family of choice or even their faith and that kick started me into not drinking anymore like a fish mm -hmm. um it i lost 60 pounds um i started doing things in business that i'd never given myself permission to do for one reason only people in the room were doing it that were you know higher up than me and not all of them you know, we all perceive not all. I was like, well, damn, if that guy can do it. Yeah. Like you, re do it. you realize there's no rules. There's mm -hmm. no rules. You can literally achieve whatever you want. And there's probably somebody in the room or somebody in the network that's already done it. And they'll show you the way. And they'll share it with you. That's the big oh. difference. Dude, what I have found, Chris, like I grew up blue collar, north of England, Rich people were assholes. Like they, you, you didn't mess with them. They were a different class. They were landed gentry, and it was all inherited money. And over here, I get invited to the country club. You know, I had a little bit of success in business, and I was never comfortable around any of those people. But when you're around self-made millionaires and self-made billionaires, all they want to do is turn around to struggling entrepreneurs and help them. And they will pour into you. If they see you working, they will just give and give and give to help you succeed. And that's the difference between self-made people and inherited wealth, man. Yep. And I, just, I can't get enough of it. I love being around you guys. It, um, you said something key. If they see you doing the work. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not a handout. No, you, you yeah, get what you up. Yeah, you get what you give. If you want something, you've got to go in and put the value in and put the work in. Yeah, for sure. And for that's sure. what's that's what's so strange. Every once in a while, somebody will slip through and get into my DMs and I get a call on get on a call with them. And they've been so damaged by other networking groups or whatever experiences they've had. And I'm ex I'm describing, you know, this is why we're on the call. I'm describing what opportunity they have. And they, they won't believe it. And I'm like, you just need to come visit, like literally, whatever it costs, just come visit. If, if it's not worth it, I'll, I'll buy your plane ticket home. It's not a big deal. But it's the strangest thing to realize that it's like that movie, um, Planet of the Apes, the gorilla, the gorilla's in the cage and the door gets opened and the gorilla just sits there and is afraid to come out. Mm hmm. That's the saddest thing in the world. And that's one of the things that gets me to do the post and, and the videos and everything is how can I say, how can I make the salt lick salty enough that they have to come drink some water after? That's all, I, that's I like all my that. job that's is. I that's like all that. my job is to yeah. say the story well enough to make them go, well, I wonder what if. Yeah. 
because that might change someone's life. And oh, who totally. knows, dude, we might make millions and millions of dollars with all these people that believe like we believe, but there might, there, our purpose might be to just touch one. Oh, and yeah. we might not ever know who that one is. And I live my life like that as much as I can. I'm not perfect at it, but with, it's not about me. It's not about what I get out of it. It's just, I'm just, I have to live the best version of me at all times so that I can encourage that one person who I'm probably never going to know that I encouraged. Mm. And that's okay with me. <laughs> that's okay with me because I would do Brian Tracy has no friggin' idea about me. None. Right. I'm one dude that he shook hands with thought he was going to rip my shoulder out of the socket, but I'm one dude that he shook hands. <laughs> and that's a life we'll live. What are you doing, Brian? <laughs> My, my, battery's, squirrel or something. my battery looks like it's flashing on me here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Which wouldn't be a good All right, thing. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, leave him oh, to oh, it for oh, a second, oh. Chris. Um, talk to me for a minute about how you figured out the need for Apex Accelerator and how that's going and how it's helping guys that are on the uh, uh, entourage and entrepreneur level make it through to execs. Tell us a little bit about that program. Man. So when I first came, so I've been in social media since 2009 started making money in social media in 2012. Um, and when I came into Ryan's program, I came in through level one, like mm -hmm. a lot of people do. And I came in like there are 500 people in the group total. And I do a live video because I have no problem doing that. And I'm fired up because I've known Ryan since 2009. And I'm like, I can't believe I just invested money to be a part of his program. Let me join this thing. And within three months, I went ahead and decided to join his top level program called Executives. And as I dove into the actual teaching of his program, I'm like, I've already done all of this. Like, I know how to do this. And so I went back down to Apex One People. It's called Entourage. And I went to a meetup and it was a vastly different meetup than executives. Everybody's sitting around the bar drinking beer. It's loud and noisy and everybody's just having fun. And I'm like, I didn't spend this money to come to Dallas to do this. This is right. not cool. So I gathered up this little group of people and I just started breathing life into them from what I just learned from executives. And I saw Mark Zalman off there. His eyeballs popped open and um, Pedro Meneses was there. His eyeballs popped open. And over the course of the next six months, I trained Jonathan Loudermilk, Mark Zalmanoff, and Brian McKittrick. And the next thing you know, they've joined executives. Mm -hmm. And then I go back the second year and I start training a hundred people and I'm doing it for free. And I go through the program, get through five videos. And I, I rate, say, everybody raise your hand. Who's still confused about step number one and like three quarters of the room, raise their hand. And I was like, all right, send me a DM. We'll talk about it, dude. I got so many DMs. My calendar got full for like a month and a half. And I'm like, I can't keep doing this for free. I just right. I don't have any. I got them running companies. So what I did is I said, hey, I'm going to charge a nominal fee monthly. And if you want to come through this program, I will teach you exactly how I've helped people level up in less than a year to executives financially. So results driven. Mm -hmm. I'll teach you the leadership mindset, everything that I do, because I've learned how to navigate. I mean, build the machine is build the machine, but there's also a mindset to it to go, this is all I need from this step to move on to this step to make this thing. And then, you know, sometimes it's like, well, I'm on video number 26. Yeah. Have you, have you learned how to get people to drop in your DMs yet? <laughs> no, bro. You don't need to worry about getting on stage. Everybody wants to get on stage. Well, I want to mm -hmm. write a best selling book. You, you haven't even gotten a CRM like yeah. stop. Um, so I, I boiled it down to just the essential things to get people results. And we started out with 20 and we now have 70 uh, paying members. And we're probably going to end up having several hundred inside of apex and we'll end up having thousands inside of iconic. And we're teaching everybody the same thing, which is what we've been talking about on this episode, mm -hmm. um, how to find their purpose, how to communicate with integrity and core values to attract your ideal clients so that you can make sales. And by the way, I'm going to introduce you to this larger network of people that I'm really, really good friends with once you're vetted that you can then join in our cause, uh, make a lot of money doing what you're doing, but more importantly, hang out with people that you actually friggin' like to hang out with all yeah. the time. 
And so that's how Apex Accelerator started. And I just went to Ryan and I said, this is going to work. And he said, I agree with you. So we partnered up on it. And um, it's, I, mean, we, I think we're less than a month in. And, um, and we've got four or five coaches already. We've got uh, 10 people on staff. We've got a full tech crew behind us that are helping people build the parts and machine that they don't know how to build. It's like it's everything anybody needs to actually find some success building business online. Really yeah, that, excited that's, about it. That's, awesome. that's what you need. It's, it's that accountability and that, that whole group doing it together. It's everybody going through it at the same time. And, yeah. uh, you all help pull each other along, man. Well, it's the same thing. It's the same thing you learned in entrepreneurs before you went to execs. Same thing Brian's doing right now. Mm. You find that crew of people that you're running with, and it's like it's easier to draft. You see geese flying in that V formation. Yeah. There's a reason for it. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> it was funny when I uh, first jumped into the iconic group, and everyone that kept showing up were all the all my people here, the concentrator family of choice that are all commenting here. And it was like, oh, you're here too. Oh, you're here too. And those are all the people that we all aligned with naturally. In the events, we all had our little circles that we go off to the side. Same thing with the, the one of my first events there was like a big drinking party. And I'm like, you know, this is all fun and stuff, but I could do this at home. Like, so then we started having little dinners. We had a dinner with uh, me and yeah. Sam and uh, Thomas and Greg, and Greg yeah. at the steakhouse. And we had a concentrated dinner. We really got to know each other. Me and Sam actually connected that night, went smoke cigars. And we said, we should do something together. And that's where this started over cigars. Here we are. Texas. Yeah. How cool is that? Uh, how can we do something to give back a little bit more to the world, you know? And uh, that's how this kind of came out. And trying to and the last, you know, the last time we were, the last time we were down there, I think I had like sixty people in the room. Um, I invited everybody to come to dinner and just have a, a pre-meeting meeting. I paid for everybody's dinner, and we just, dude, we like everybody was just talking and having a great time. We had five or six people stand up and speak, and it's like. Look at leaders emerging and look at people going, I want to be like that, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's the name of the game is to really mentor people and to show them that it is very possible. We, you know, I got a big nose and uh, losing my hair and it's all white and gray and mm -hmm. people still like, I'm willing to get up on stage and look like an idiot because I'm here to help. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. And When we help people take their eyes off themselves, the imposter syndrome goes away. And then they get to shine that light, dude. And that's, I can't tell you how many times somebody that is meek, that has not had all the success in business will say something so profound that I'll start tearing up, man. Cause you just see that they're getting it and that they're making a difference in the world. And I think that's what it's really all about. And that's what ends up from that. You end up finding five, six, seven, eight people that you're like, man, every time I come down here, I want to be around these people. I've never mm -hmm. met people like this in my life. It's your own little goon squad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Comes a goon yeah. squad. And yeah, no bull jokes, so we're okay. Hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> I can't believe we made it almost an hour and didn't get a joke about that. <laughs> Tom Keenan will forever, ever. I, I, you know, that was real funny when he started making that joke and I thought it was going to stay private. It, no, no. It's all over Apex now. And so it's like, I, I, it's not something I ever wanted to be branded for. So forget this live video thing. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll change the subject. Man. <laughs> uh, there was a funny one going on the other day on that post. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we've got we, we've got about 10 minutes of air time before we got to wrap this up, Chris. Um, what kind of message you want to get out to the listeners that are, uh, are on here? Let's let's use this last 10 minutes and drop some value for it. So well, more, think, va more value. Like it's not been 50 minutes worth of value already. So I, I think the most important message that I have to say until I have no more breath in me to speak is I want you to know that you're important, that you matter. I want you to know that you're a meaningful, specific in this world, that no one has ever been created like you, nor will ever anyone ever be created exactly like you, which means you have something to offer. Mm -hmm. You might not feel like it. You might not know it. You might be looking at all the things that you've done wrong. And I want to let you know that every single one of us has done just about as bad as you have. The only difference is we chose to take a step forward today. And then we choose to keep doing those small steps every single day, giving ourselves a little bit of grace, moving along, believing in our dreams and aligning with people that can help us get there by helping them get to where they want to get to, too. So you need to understand first that you do matter. Number two, that you do have a purpose on this earth that God made you very specifically. And I'm not ashamed to say that. 
And then I want you to take the time to explore what that might look to you so that you can find your inner voice. Because once you do, oh boy, game on, game on. And I hope that when you do, you'll find me, whether you're a paying client or you're just a friend, come find me, shake my hand and let me know what your message is, because I'll be one of the people that's willing to help promote you. Dude, do you have a microphone to drop right now? Could you just like, just, <laughs> just the truth. That that was strong though. That was yeah, strong. That was awesome. Like that was just just give and give and give. I love it. Giving, yeah. I love give it. Get. Now give us get. That's all you do, right? When I when I learned, and this is a key component for everyone, I don't give because I get. <clears throat> That's what I had to burn out of me. Hmm. Yeah. When I truly just started giving because I understood that that was my purpose to hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Then, then the universe started dropping all of the plus things onto me. And that took me a long time, by the way. It took me a really, really long time. I had a lot of layers to uncover. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I still get into it, you know, but that's why I work on it every day. I mean, I have an app that Ryan created called the G-Code. We all have it. And mm -hmm. faithfully, gentlemen, every single day, every single day, it is the first thing that I do. I do not get on social media. I do not check my email. I might listen to an audio book. Um, when I first get up, but the very first thing that I do is I fill out my gratitudes, mm -hmm. what and who I am grateful for in life. And I think about what my day was like yesterday. And I think about, you know, what lesson I learned. Um, and I think about who I invested my time with. And that is a building block that I use one small thing that I use every day that has made me 10 times the man that I was three years ago. Something as simple as that. Dude, what I like about that is when, whenever you've got some shit hitting the fan or you're not feeling it or you've not had the best day, you can just open that app and I can pick any single day I want and just click on it and go, okay, that was a good day. And okay, that was a good day. And oh, wow, I had a lot to be grateful for on that day. Oh, wow, I got a lot of wins there. And that's what I like about it is that it gives you a, a foundation to be grateful and it gives you a reason to be happy. You can list the wins. You list who you talk to and who you got to influence and who you got to help that day. And um, it's just like having all this fucking goodness right there in the middle of your hand. Like, it's, it's great. Dude. I love it. We have, you, have, you, have, you, have you guys ever hung out with Mark Zalmanoff? Yeah, he's the best. Have you ever heard him say anything negative ever once in your life? He reminds me of yeah, Tigger from Bernie the Pooh. Yeah. That's a negative. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. Yeah, more more burpees and like when he's calling out shit at the workouts and he's circuit training that's pretty negative uh, <laughs> but he reminds me of tigger from winnie the pooh he's just got this boundless yeah. optimism and energy man and he he just oh, he, he exudes it it just it, it drips off a room of you know he lights up yeah. the room when he walks in you yeah know? that's that's yeah. what we gotta strive i like who, it that's who i want to be in life yes. i want to be the guy that takes what someone else, Mark literally does this. Someone will say something negative to him. He will turn it 180 degrees and hand it back. Yeah. And, and then tell you to do some burpees and see how you feel about it. <laughs> that, that, that's true too. That's then he'll make fun of you and make you go work out. The glass half oh. full, right? The glass half empty, glass half full. That was my uh, year one, uh, day one of this year's uh, message was, you know, this should be the year of looking at the glass half full. It's the same glass. Okay. But it's all how we rewire, right? I want to ask you guys a question then. This will be a good way to end it. Okay. I can, put, I can, I, I can be the interviewer on your podcast. There we go. Like <laughs> Do you guys have a word for this year? You want to go first, Brian? Or? Go ahead. Let me think about this. I don't know if I dialed it in. Because I, I, th this is going to be important. So while you guys are thinking about it, I'm going to frame it for everybody else, right? <clears throat> what you think about comes about. And if you're doing something as crazy as us three guys do and write your gratitudes out every day or <laughs> you have an app like and we just type them in every day. One of the things that I do and I've been doing it for years, my little brother has been doing it for years, um, is we pick a word for the year Ooh. and that word for the year we burn into our unconscious minds. Last year, my word was money and I typed it up capital letters, M-O-N-E-Y. Let me tell you something. It came. Did it work? This year. Yeah, it worked. It worked. It's, it's worked every year. This year, I have a new word, and I'll share it with you guys, but I'm curious. If you don't have one, I want you to have one, um, and what would it be? I, I have one. You want to go, Brian, or you want me to go? The one that keeps ringing in my head, and you said it a couple of times, is freedom. 
I like to pick up and go to Texas whenever I feel like and not have to think about money. And that that freedom, that's 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 what I want out of all of this. I want to not have to think about money. I want to be able to go help people do good, do what I want to do and go, you know, spread the love a little bit without having to think about can I pay for this? Can you know can I afford this? You know, can is this you know, I don't know, we've been been away eight times this year. Is the ninth time really necessary, you know, with the extra plane and a hotel and I don't want to think like that. I want to think, you know what, I'm going to go there, I'm going to be around good people, and I want to spread, you know, I want to give some, and I want to get some, and we want to, you know, that freedom word that you said a couple of times keeps ringing in my head is, I want that freedom. I want that that freedom from having to chase a dollar, you know. That chase so on dollar. your on your G-Code app, um, what I want you to do then, if, if you don't mind, is make sure that that's one of the last words that you write on your gratitudes every single day, and do it in capital letters, the word freedom. Mm-hmm. I like that. Well, how about see, you, Sam? Dude, my last year, my last year was so good. Um, there's none of this new year, new me shit. I'm just going to keep going. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep working. I'm going to keep doing And I feel like this year is going to be a watershed for me and breaking out. And uh, we'll be publishing the book and the podcast doing better and better. And my businesses have never been as healthy as this. And so my keyword for the year, it, it just has to be impact. There's nothing mm-hmm. else that sticks out as much as, how many people can I positively affect with my message and how many lives can I impact? It's just, that's got to be because the money just the, like I'm not rich. I'm not. But my bills are paid. My rent is paid. Um, by the time everything settles next week, I've got one more investment property that I'm selling and I will have paid off over six figures in debt last year. I still live fairly modestly. But could you imagine starting a fucking year with I've got several tens of thousands of dollars in the bank um, and no debt and full pipelines and full businesses yeah. and everything's running like it should. My keyword's got to be impact. That's what I'm going for this year. Okay. I really want to make an impression. Freedom and impact. So here's my G code app. <clears throat> and if you see up there, my word is exponential growth. Mm. I, I love know it. it's a phrase, but I chose exponential growth because this is the year gentlemen. This is the year, and I, I, it's already in the bag. I know it's coming. And um, so think about freedom, impact, and exponential growth. Dude, what a year that's going to be. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's what you got on this podcast, everybody. Yeah. Well, go that? write that down. Hold us to it. <laughs> I will. I will. I'll remember it. I, well, um, yeah. that's as good a note as any to end this on, dude. Yeah, um, that's it. It's iconic. Um, iconic i want to thank you chris and i'm sure brian does too but for for coming and pouring into us for an hour man it's been it's always a pleasure when i get to interview yeah. i, I, I awesome. love having we you got our uh, fan club here is uh everyone's on here steve jerry yeah wendy everyone, everyone tonight yeah taylor yeah it's, everyone's on it's here. been a good it's show awesome. we had a lot a lot of viewers the family of, of choice watching. is up here on uh, full force tonight it's awesome i love it and i'm i'm sure more people catch it on a replay uh Definitely. chris I will see you in a couple of days, Brian. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. And uh, man, thank you for coming on, dude. It's, it's been a pleasure. And of course, um, those are new to Chris, iconicalliance.com. You can find yeah. Chris Whitehead on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, it's the uh, official Chris Whitehead, I believe. Official it Chris official Whitehead Chris on Instagram. Whitehead. On Instagram. Follow Chris. He speaks fire and writes fire every single day. Um, those of outside, Amen. we take it for granted. Everyone knows who Chris is, and you know, because the Apex world, those of our friends that that are kind of watching what we're doing and from a distance and going, what is this craziness that Brian and Sam and everyone's doing? Um, <laughs> you know, this, this is what we're into. When, you know, conversations like this are why we go to Texas, you know, six, ten times, twelve times a year, whatever it's been, yeah. because we surround ourselves with people like Chris that, that just, it's just, we spread fire to each other and it's just, it, it just really charges your batteries and it's just a whole different way of living, a whole different mindset. Rewire your mind, as Ryan says. Uh, we re- we're rewire rewiring our minds. Uh, to we're going to rewire the whole fucking country yeah, before we die. That's done. it. Like that's the plan. <laughs> the world of hate makes right. headline. Good just needs to speak up. Love it. Let's yes. go. Yes. We will see you all uh, same time next next Monday, or I'm sure we've got. I can't remember our guest schedule, but I'm sure it's somebody fantastic. Um, so <laughs> thank you again awesome. for joining us, Chris uh, and Brian. Everyone. Thanks for hosting, man. I, I appreciate everybody. Yes, as well. yes, yes. I appreciate you. Thanks, Chris. You guys take care. Have a great one.